you have budgetary austerity, cut spending, less jobs means less taxes, less taxes means you have even less spending, and basically you get into a vicious circle going down. Today, we have the welfare state, but in the 30s, you had a terrible situation where nobody had protection. And that is in that sort of vacuum, like then, but also like now, government must govern. During the bubble, you can have markets doing the thing. It is a time of laissez-faire. But when you have to transform the economy, when you have to bring it back, you have to think of more intervention in an intelligent and bold way. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror which paralyzes needed effort to convert retreat into advance. In the 1930s, Roosevelt did not wait for Keynes to publish his general theory before starting the New Deal. The New Deal was started in 1933. The general theory was published in 1934. New Deal with two important elements. The first is that when the market itself doesn't work to create jobs and jobs, so the authorities do that. Og det gjorde de ved å sette i gang store infrastrukturprosjekter, ikke minst veiutbygging, og tusenvis av mennesker kom i arbeid på den måten. Government very often comes in to help with the infrastructure of each of the technological revolutions. So if you think of railways, internet, or roads for automobiles, they have to cover the whole thing. You can't just have little bits of it. Each technological revolution brings an infrastructure that makes it possible to use all the products of that revolution. It widens the market space. There must be a strict supervision of all banking and credits and investment. There must be an end to speculation with other people's money. Det andre elementet med New Deal er at man innfører et skarpt skille mellom sparebanker og investeringsbanker. Og det gjør man gjennom den såkalte Glass Steagall Act. When the collapse came, obviously it had an impact not only on the Wall Street banks, but also on all the small banks in the rest of the country, because it was household savings that had been sent to Wall Street and had been used in the speculation. Something had to be done to try and separate the speculation side of the banking system from the side of the banking system that was supposed to be financing individuals buying houses, financing the small agriculturalists in terms of trying to, you know, to buy another thresher, another tractor, or the small manufacturers that were starting to be built up throughout the US. There was actually a period, several decades after the Great Depression, after World War II, uh, we put into place uh, strong regulatory frameworks that worked. And they did prevent uh, the creation of at least uh, large bubbles. Uh, there were no financial crises for about 30 years. Then, under the influence of market fundamentalism, the notion that markets work by themselves, Thatcher, Reagan, uh, these regulations were stripped away. You know, the, the argument was we didn't have any crises, so why do we need regulations? But the regulations were the reason we didn't have the crises. And after uh, these regulations started to be stripping away, we started having crises. There have been over a hundred around the world since 1980. 